So in 13 days from the moment I'm speaking here, Mars enters Gemini for an over seven month stint in the sign of Gemini where it will complete a retrograde cycle all in that sign of Gemini. This video, I'm gonna break down some of the historical resonances with this cycle. It's quite mind blowing what you'll see here, I think, in terms of what these cycles have been about in the past and how they're resonating with our current moment in time. I'm excited, I'm excited. It kind of blew my mind researching this stuff, so stay tuned. So wow, here we are on the cusp of this big Mars retrograde in Gemini we've been anticipating for so long. We're already here midsummer 2022 on the cusp of finishing out this um, year. What a time to be alive, right? It's always wonderful to be alive, but it's wonderful living through transits that have been on the horizon and now we're here. In this video, I'm not gonna approach this transit from maybe the symbolic kind of natal astrological model. I'm gonna look at dates dates of when this has happened in the past and try to extract a narrative that we can then overlay with the present reality. This one transit we're looking at, Mars stations retrograde 30 October 2022, 1425 in Central Europe. Mars will then be retrograde all of November, all of December, and then on January 12th, Mars stations direct in the ninth degree of Gemini or eight degrees Gemini, and then it moves back through Gemini, finally entering Cancer on 25 March. So it's over seven months of Mars and Gemini. So the first thing I wanna to bring to your attention, the last time that Mars stationed retrograde in this same degree, the 26th degree of Gemini, when was it? Well, it's all the way back to 29 BC. It's stationed retrograde in this degree. It has not done it in this exact degree. You have the whole 20, sixth degree has strict boundaries. So we're back in 29 BC now, and it brings us to a fascinating period in history, which is the rise of Augustus Caesar, the first Roman emperor. Actually, this period, this retrograde of Mars, where it stations retrograde in October 29 BC and then stations direct in January 28 BC, comes in this very fascinating period in world history and in the history of the West, which is the period after Augustus Caesar or Octavian destroyed his enemies Mark Antony and Cleopatra commit suicide in 30 BC and he destroyed the rivals. But there's this intermediate period where uh, Augustus, Octavian, this is the same person, was sort of deploying his political machinations back in Rome with the Senate and negotiating until finally in 27 BC, the Senate gives him power. 27 BC is the day historians mark as the beginning of a couple of key things. One, the Roman Empire begins in 27 BC. Historians call it Pax Romana, which is the peace that um, happened for about 200 years after um, Octavian becomes Augustus Caesar. So we have this Mars retrograde transit in this exact degree triggering Pax Romana back in 29 BC. But this is an intermediate period after a lot of the big events happen where there's a, again, planning, waiting, negotiating, very Mars retrograde until the initiation of this new world. It creates the imperial cult. It, it creates the kind of obsession with the leader, the individual that will then become the godlike leader of the period. A lot of astrology was developed actually during this period, of course, Gemini is ruled by Mercury, the planet of astrology. So maybe there's gonna be some new breakthroughs astrologically um, during this time, or we're already in it, right? We're already in a period with so many new and interesting breakthroughs. I think that continues, just seeing that the degree of Mars's station, retrograde station, has not happened since the time of Augustus Caesar. Next, let's look at the last time Mars station direct in the degree that it will station direct on 12 January, 2023. This one is much closer in time. This happened in 1818. And I'll say this here, the Mars retrograde in 1817 and 1818 is the one that I think is most resonant with our current moment. During Mars's retrograde station in October, 1817, Saturn was in Aquarius, the North Node was in Taurus, the South Node was in Scorpio, direct resonance with the two longest term points that we look at in the traditional system, the nodes and Saturn matching by sign, um, 2022 and the retrograde station of Mars that'll happen in October this year. So this is highly resonant astrologically because of the other points that match. So the first thing I'll say is the third Anglo-Maratha war 
was taking place. And this is a war between the British East India Company and between uh, the Maratha Empire and India. And the war left this com the British East the war left the company in control of India, much of India. And this is uh, known as the period where before the British government actually took control of India later in that century, the British East India Company basically took over. So we're talking about corporations ruling people a corporate takeover, a corporate transnational corporate takeover of a large swath of the world and a large chunk of the human population. That was completed during this Mars retrograde period. Now, what happens is that they win the battle and then they sign the treaty in January just as Mars is stationing direct. So in 1818, um, right around that direct station, you get the Treaty of Mandiswar, which brings an end to this war. But it's not until 1818 and 1819 when, although there has been a political resolution, the actual battle on the ground doesn't end until the next year. So again, we have this idea of a resolution, a phase of resolution before a complete sort of takeover is finished, just like Augustus, right? Augustus becomes Augustus after a period of planning during a Mars retrograde in Gemini. So too, the British East India Company doesn't quite take over until a year later after this uh, retrograde station. And again, when you look up Pax Romana, this is what's so interesting. Um, there's only three other Paxes that are talked about. And the next one I'll mention here, they're all three gonna be mentioned. And they all three relate to Mars, retrograde and Gemini. This is like the mind getting blown open. But this second one is the Pax Britannica. And Pax Britannica is the idea that the British Empire takes over between 1815 and 1914. It's the imperial century. The British Empire controls many miles all over the world. There's trade routes that open. They're a global hegemonic power, much like the Roman Empire was a hegemonic power for the region starting in 27 BC, two years after the Mars retrograde in Gemini. Well, this Pax Britannica actually starts, according to the historians here, um, two years before, but it's still right in the pocket where a Mars retrograde in Gemini kicks off a period of peace. So it's just fascinating of the transits I'm looking at. So let's just pause here. The last time it stationed retrograde Mars and Gemini in the same degree as 2022, you get Pax Romana. The last time it stationed direct in Gemini in the same degree that it will station in 2023 this year, you have Pax Britannica kicking off with this corporate kind of global transnational corporate rule descending on um, the population. Now, I want to just pause here and say I'm a critic of exploitation and dominance by p power, right? I'm a critic of power. I think we should always critique power, constant critique, constant criticism, constant deconstruction of the exercise of power by powerful over the dispossessed. And so even in a period like Pax Britannica and Pax Romana, there is oppressed and exploited peoples all over the world. So just let me be clear, I'm not saying that this transit of Mars retrograde in Gemini 2022-2023 means no more suffering for the world. In fact, it's probably the opposite. You'll have a dominant regime where their people will then be subjugated to that regime and the kind of edicts of that regime. So it's more of a question of the power of authority that would allow for a greater control such that these warring periods cease in some ways or are relatively lessened. And I'm gonna talk much more in a second about the applications to our current moment, so stay tuned for that. Now, what else was going on in 1817, 1818 that was kind of mind-blowing for me to see? The Great Rebellion of 1817 and 1818 in Sri Lanka. And, and this rebellion actually kicks off in the month of Mars's retrograde station, 1817, October. And it had to do with the British crown and rebellion. And I'm not going to get into the history of it, but what have we seen in 2022? A rebellion in Sri Lanka. It's been all over the news. It's been a major story of 2022. It happened earlier in the year, uh, not during uh, a time when Mars is in Gemini, but it makes me wonder what might continue to happen in Sri Lanka. Is there going to be more rebellion, more protest as this Mars enters Gemini and starts slowing down in October because it would be resonant with the Great Rebellion of 1817 there in Sri Lanka. You know, currently the government there is uh, targeting organizers. They're going after people. This is the new president. Maybe that regime will keep things in check. Who knows? Or maybe there's going to be more explosion. There's activists still engaged. Um, and, you know, the peace and justice activists looking for a better life still engaged. And allies of the former president that was overthrown are back in parliament. So there's, it's not quite resolved maybe there in Sri Lanka yet. What else was going down in 1817? Well, this really blew my mind. 
The first cholera pandemic originates in Bengal, reaching Calcutta by December. So this is the first major outbreak of cholera, happens in 1817. The dates are fishy, a little bit unknown. There was also a typhus epidemic in Edinburgh and Glasgow. So there's a, a something about disease spreading that is triggered also by Mars in Gemini for so long, and it would fit. Uh, Gemini is an air sign. It's an air sign of, of the planet Mercury, which is hard to pin down. Mars can be harmful things, right? Damage. And so what are we seeing now? Obviously, we've been living since 2020 with that health crisis, the first iteration of it. But look what's going on as we are getting closer to Mars's entry in Gemini. Monkeypox spreads. U.S. declares health emergency. It's a designation that's going to free up some emergency funds. This just happened like last week. Many states, health emergency, monkeypox, crisis, World Health Organization, monkeypox, monkeypox. So I'm watching this monkeypox situation as a potential resonant event with 1817, 1818, that exact match for our current moment with the Mars retrograde cycle, Saturn and Aquarius, the nodes in Taurus, Scorpio configured just as they are in 2022. We've done the last time that Mars stations retrograde in the same degree as 2022. We've done the last time Mars stations direct in the same degree as this uh, iteration in 2023. Well, what about the last time that Mars completed a retrograde cycle in the sign of Gemini? Um, that brings us even closer to recent history. We get 1943, 44. <laughs> Which is crazy. It's really insane that it's timing, and I'll show you why here, but 1933-1934. What's going on in the world? World War II. A massive upheaval. Jupiter and Saturn conjunction hits in 1940. There's global upheaval, and now we're here in 1933, fall, and then, in, and then winter 1944 where you get this Mars and Gemini. Well, if you look at World War II, what was happening? In 1943, May, Churchill and FDR were planned D-Day. It was anticipated that when America joined the war, eventually the Allies would invade Europe. But no one really knew when it was going to happen. Stalin was begging for it to happen earlier, but the Americans and the British were planning. They used the Mars retrograde Gemini to plan the invasion. They decided in um, middle of 43, and then that whole Mars retrograde, they were planning the invasion doesn't take place until D-Day, June 1944. It's perfect. I, these guys were using astrologers, by the way, and there's some questions as to um, if they were using it more for a gimmick or more for a psychological war with the Nazis. But they had astrologers, and I guarantee you, whatever astrologer they had said, hey, Mars is going to be retrograde. Don't invade yet. Wait for it to station. I think we can use this point for our own lives. Maybe we use this fall to plan, and then we're going to have our own personal kind of initiatives into 2023. That'll be what I want to cover in another video. So, and this is where it gets really trippy for me because the third pack, so you go to Wikipedia and if you, when you type in Pax Americana, this is the first sentence. Latin for American peace, modeled after Pax Romana and Pax Britannica. It's right there in the first sentence that there's these three Paxes in terms of like the Western version of history. And guess when Pax Americana starts? 1945, the end of World War II. And so we have these Mars retrograde and Gemini periods that are resonant, the three that are most resonant with now, all triggering a new Pax. I'm just kind of floored by seeing this. It's kind of got me agape and my mouth just, wow. These things happen when we look at cycles, but this is one that's been really kind of impactful because how would this be? How could this be that these exact degree hits and then the full cycle hit all point to Pax Americana? Pax Romana, Pax Britannica. And so this is where I'm gonna bring it to our current moment. I've spoken about this a little bit on the channel, but what could it be? Here we are in 2022, what could this be? Who's about, who's on the cusp of becoming Augustus Caesar, becoming the British Empire, becoming the American Empire? What entity or organization or turn is on the cusp? Well, we know there's, there's a war happening in Ukraine. So recently, uh, Macron of France says Russia is one of the last imperial colonial powers. So is it Russia and its imperial colonialism on the cusp? I don't think so. It's too, you know, maybe, maybe with the BRICS nations and China and Russia that the second this new empire is emerging and is on the cusp of some kind of victory, that would be, you know, one take on this, that maybe the BRICS nations are about to make their game 
here and they're, we're going to settle into a kind of new Eastern dominant world. The other side, critics say, well, listen, you know, when Ukraine had the event there in 2014, what happened was is that Western conglomerates, the Fortune 500, the global superclass, was able to get into Ukraine and a lot of the assets of the country were sold off. So like here's an article from 2015, right after that, those events in 2014, Ukraine agrees to Monsanto land grab for 17 billion IMF loan. So you had the IMF, these Western banking institutions right away taking over. And this would fit more with a model that you have the kind of Western architecture of the kind of, you know, the dominant powers of the Western empire. It's not just America. Pax Americana has been built on the, you know, banking institutions and the investment class and the Fortune 500 taking over the world. The Marshall Plan um, was talked about when you read about Pax Americana. All of the investment architecture and the corporatization, again, we're talking about transnational corporations, just like the British East India Company. So we're in the realm of these transnational corporations that really control the West. And maybe this moment will have them uh, victorious in Ukraine and sort of collapsing, you know, this last holdout of the old imperial way. And then we're going to enter into a new Pax, you know, corporate, <laughs> corporatana, Pax corporatana. Pax Digitana, if we're talking about the digitization and the corporate digitization, you know, and that's where I want to go next because we're talking about the fourth industrial revolution. This is an article from Brookings from 2020, and this is all about the fourth industrial revolution in Africa. They're going to, the, the digitization will go to Africa and turn Africa into a global powerhouse. The underside of this, the difficult side of this, I was just watching a video on Twitter earlier. There's a lot of exploitation in Africa. Africa has not freed itself from the grasp of these powers, whether it's the BRICS nations in China or the Western conglomerates, extracting resources basically and not sharing with the people there. And so I think the fourth industrial revolution, if there is a takeover of these Western powers with the with these technologies, the digitization in particular. So that's all, everything's digitized, cash is digitized, and the whole world basically is in the cloud with these super corporations as the new governments. That's really my, what I think is gonna happen, that we have, will enter in a phase that the historians will look back upon as the kind of Pax Digitifica, Pax Digitana, something like this. And this is going to be the digitization of government and reality where the corporations basically are the new colonial powers or the new empires. And this fits with, so this is one of the kind of heroes of the World Economic Forum. Um, this guy, Naval Noah Harari, professor history, Hebrew University in Jerusalem. He is held up by um, the World Economic Forum as a as a big thought leader, he's got big books that have been popular. But here's an article, a speech from him, 2022 February. He says, overconcentration of data increases the risk of digital dictatorship and data colonialism. So here we go. I think this is really what is going to happen here. Big tech and artificial intelligence are, will emerge here maybe in the next two, year or two, right? That was the timing in 29 BC. That was the timing in 43, 1943. It was two years later that the shift comes. It was even the timing in 1817, 1818. It took a year for the British East India Company to really um, settle those gains that had signed in that treaty in January 1818. So I think we're on the cusp. I mean, my sense here with the astrology is that we're globally on the cusp of some kind of profound new world system. It's just right here in the symbolism. I mean, it's undeniable when you just look at these dates and you look at what's happening on our world. You know, and then the other thing I wanted to point out, so Africa, major landmass, most resources, you know, many, many, many people. India is the rising continent as well. It will surpass China in a few decades for the greatest population in the world. Here's Dr. Vandana Shiva, love her, loved her work for many years, actually. She's a, a critic, a philosopher, a thinker. Here's a tweet from her in January this year. The tech billionaires who became billionaires through globalization, deregulation, and tax evasion. Imagine there are no national governments, no regulations, no rules. They think the world is a wild west to impose their digital empires. Time to reclaim sovereignty and regulate tech giants. So Global Corp has taken over and, and risks this kind of digital empire of exploitation. Maybe they would, the, the people running these corporations would call it this Pax Digitifica, Pax Digitana, where these global em, digital empires are gonna settle reality.
And I mean, I'll leave you to decide. You can think on your own and have your own opinions. I know for me, I'm a little bit critical of this, just to be clear. I think even if it happens, we're going to have to have a resistance, just like in Star Wars, right? There's the Empire, and then there's the Rebellion. <laughs> there's going to be a Rebellion. And I don't mean it has to be an organized global rebellion, but just in our own personal lives. How do we retain the soul? That's what I've been talking about on this channel, retention of the soul given these rapid technological changes. So then the final thing I want to leave the video with. Look at the astrology of André Barbeau. This is a whole separate video and a separate topic, but French astrologer predicted the pandemic in very clear terms, predicted the pandemic years before it happened. He said 2020 global pandemic will kick off a crisis. And that crisis to him didn't end or won't end until 2025. This is translated from one of his articles in French. He says this period of crisis 2020 is resolved in 2026 when Uranus becomes sextile to Saturn, Neptune, and Aries and trine Pluto and Aquarius. I've called this the basket transit. You can look at the aspects here, and it's this beautiful basket that is formed by the modern outer planets. So Barbeau was saying that that moment, because those planets are in a new waxing phase, most of them, will be the resolution of the crisis. And he says we will have nine ascending cycles, the most beautiful configuration of the 21st century, and he says the new world civilization whose beginnings appeared uh, around the year 2000 is taking off here. Again, the digitization, right? The rise of the internet around the year 2000. What happens? Facebook's founded, YouTube's founded, Twitter all right after 2000, before 2000. AOL, the internet just comes online, right? All those internet companies are emergent. Google. Um, and then this entry into the second quarter of the century bears the stamp of the achievement of a new age of humanity, the central harmonic position. And so there we go. He says that a significant rise in the standard of living of the underprivileged, a victory over poverty won and solidarity. He's very optimistic that right again, three years after this cycle, but that's still within this same zone that this whole video I've been talking about, a Mars retrograde in Gemini around these same positions, boom, we have a whole new world that's kicking off. Barbeau says it, he's not even looking at the Mars retrograde cycles. And then the last thing here, starting in 2023, completing in 2026, all of the outer planets will change signs. And so it's a massive symbolic big new beginning that descends on this reality. Saturn is in Pisces in 2023, Aries in 2025. Pluto enters Aquarius first in 2023. Um, and these are the year of the first ingresses. So they go back over some of them. Jupiter first enters Taurus in 2023, Gemini in 2024, and Cancer in 2025. Neptune enters Aries in 2025, and Uranus enters Gemini in 2025. And so by that 2025 point, two years after this Mars direct station, January 2023, Mars Stations Direct. We have the rebirth symbolically of a massive new reality. Pax, whatever, is going to come. And this is resonant with this. these cycles we've looked at this in this video. Octavian becomes Augustus Caesar. America becomes the dominant force in the reality. And the British Empire kind of locks into its greatest period that they call Pax Britannica. So I hope this video has been interesting to you. I know it was to me. My mind is kind of still blown by looking at this stuff and I hope it can change how you think about reality, give you some hope and optimism. Some people are really doom and gloom. Um, I think this can kind of reformulate maybe the opportunities and pitfalls of what we're about to enter into, but I'm kind of optimistic about it. You know, I think that there's hope for the global order to kind of stabilize here a little bit as we get through this period of rebirth, the 2020, 2021, 2022 have been with that Jupiter-Saturn conjunction and then the new and just all of the upheaval we've just lived through. So take care.